everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my Crown of Midnight reading vlog. So I am finally continuing on with the Throne of Glass series, obviously with Crown of Midnight, the second book. Full disclosure, this video will be full of spoilers for the Throne of Glass series, so if you haven't read this series or this book in particular, and you don't want to be spoiled, click away now. This is the second part in my series of documenting me reading the Throne of Glass series for the first time. So I started Crown of Midnight last night and I am now 100 pages into it and honestly I don't really have a lot of thoughts on it. I have just gotten to the part where Selena has gone to that party to try and gain information about Aelin whose character I'm quite intrigued by because I keep seeing her name pop up on social media and she got like sliced with that knife and was poisoned and now Kale is like nursing her back to health. So far I'm liking it but again like I'm not really I don't really have an opinion on it much like when I read a throne of glass I'm hoping that things start getting a little bit more intriguing for me the little inklings of plot we've gotten so far have been sort of interesting I'm interested to find more about the like shadowy person that was in the library earlier in the book but at the moment it's giving me the same vibes as the first book where it's like a lot of stuff's happening but I don't really care about it. I think one of the problems is I know that Kale and Selena at the very least are going to be okay no matter what happens to them because I know that they are in later books and also with Selena being the main character and this being a Sarah J Mass series there's not really high stakes like I know that if a character is injured they are going to be okay um, Sarah J Maas isn't the kind of author to kill off main characters. So, so far I don't really have a lot of thoughts on it, I'm just hoping that things start to pick up. But I am only 100 pages in, like there's many more pages to go where things can really start kicking off. It's now a couple of days later and I'm on page 212 of Crown of Midnight, obviously because it's the Crown of Midnight reading vlog. I said before that I wasn't sure how I felt about it but now I am really really enjoying it. There's still not much of a plot going on. Selena has been talking to Archer a bit more, trying to work out stuff with him, threatening him to say if you don't give me more information I will kill you and I won't just try and fake your death. But she has started her relationship with Kale at this point which I'm quite like excited about because it is really cute and obviously if this wasn't a young adult series we probably would have had some spicy scenes much in the tone of Sarah J Mass's other books. The broom closet yeah, so the last like 100 pages or so has mostly been Selena and Kyle deepening their relationship, becoming romantically involved with each other. And it is really cute to read. I really love romance in Sarah J Maas's books. That's one of the main reasons why I enjoy her writing so much. I think she does romance really well. For the most part, there isn't much of a plot going on. It's sort of going on in the background. Dorian's discovered he's got some kind of magic and he's trying to work that out on his side. Nehemia is going back to her home country I believe because the king of Adalan is like doing some bad shit and it's all just sort of a general like we know something bad is happening but we don't know what and I think Selena's relationship with Carol has been something of a distraction from the main plot. Not that I'm complaining about that because I do enjoy the relationship but not a lot is happening in this book so I kind of wish that more was going on in that sense. Um, but it's quite a short book so I'm thinking the further I get into the series the more complex the plot will become and we'll still have time for things like character development and romance and everything like that because at the moment it's very one tone I guess where it's like there's one thing happening and there's not a lot of room for anything else. There was a really interesting chapter that was like half a page long. None of the characters in that scene are named um, so there's like the queen said to the princess and the prince isn't ready and so I'm wondering like who those characters could possibly be. Maybe, what's her name? Aelin, who's only been mentioned once in this book so far, is in that scene. So I'm hoping we get to find out what's going on with that soon. But I am enjoying this one a lot more than Throne of Glass already. Um, so I can tell like the further I get into the series, the more I'm going to be enjoying it. Hey guys, so it's a few days later. And I thought I'd film this update outside because it's a nice day but I'm sat right in the sun and I can't see. 
I'm just talking to you about my shirt and it'll be fine. <laughs> so we've made quite a bit of progress through kind of midnight. I'm now on page 324 and a lot has happened since I last did a little update on my thoughts. I think I mentioned that like I was really liking the way Selena and Kale's relationship was going and pretty much immediately after that Selena finds out Kale is keeping something from her and Nehemia was murdered and now she hates his guts. So that was a turn I wasn't expecting. So I'm kind of thinking like how could their relationship ever possibly be repaired because the way Selena reacted like it was pretty brutal and she was such a badass. I loved that scene where she was like basically about to kill Kale. Um, it was awesome. But later on we discovered that Selena made a will where if she died she would have left everything to Kale. So Kale's like oh crap. She actually like still cares for him in some manner. It's just that he betrayed her though I get why she was angry because obviously her friend was murdered but I can't see how that was Kale's fault like I'm pretty sure he had extra guards or whatever watching Nehemia though I suppose he he could have told Selena about the threat on her life so yeah it's all a bit complicated Dorian what's going on with Dorian I'm just like dude <laughs> He's such a wet blanket. He's like discovering more, I'm trying to learn that more about his like magic that he's, he's, he seems to have. And he's like, I can't let my father find out because he'll kill me. And it's like, yeah, that's fair enough. But like, dude, grow pair. He's just such a wimp. And I don't like him with Selena. I think I definitely, if there's ever gonna be like an end game relationship in this series, I want it to be Selena and Kale, not Selena and Dorian. But I do think the two love interests are a bit, like, they're not great. Like, we've basically got the choice between a Tory and a cop, so. I really liked the few chapters where Selena was basically just processing Nehemia's death. It was really sad and I nearly teared up at one point, but I was on the train, so I didn't actually cry. But I think if I'd been at home reading, I would have, like, there would have been tears. That shows me that I'm really loving this book way more than the first one. This is such a step up in terms of the writing and the characterization and there's still not much of a like an actual plot going on but again that's I think because it's a seven book series like it's it, it's okay for it to take a long time to get through and we're just starting to learn more about what I think would be the overarching plot of the whole series. The, was it word keys? Like the three word keys? Um, Selena's just gone to see Babby Yellowlegs about the riddle in the tombs. And so she's learned more about that. And I'm really interested to see what happens with these word keys. And like, I'm pretty sure I've read somewhere or heard somewhere online where it's something to do with opening portals to other worlds. And that's how Sarah J Mass's series all connect, that they all take part in the same universe basically, but in different worlds. So like, there's some sort of connection with the Akatar series there, I think. But I don't think that we get much confirmation of that until way later on in the series. So I'm kind of wondering like what happens in between, basically. Is it just gonna be like Selena flitting between two love interests for like six books or something? I, I basically, I just, I just have this much left of the uh the book so i'm i'm anticipating finishing it pretty soon but i've got a few days off work this weekend so i'm hyped about that and i will likely finish this and then i can get started on my september tbr i will probably update you next when i have finished crow of midnight and i will give you like my full sort of review final thoughts and what i've rated it
Selena is Aileen. Like, of what I've heard of Aileen on the internet, it kind of makes sense because I've only ever really heard her name. I've always tried to avoid spoilers for this series and I've only ever heard her name discussed. I've never seen any specific details about her and I've never seen her name with Selena's. So it kind of does make sense that Selena is Aileen. I was shook. What I was more shook about though was the fact that Selena is high fae. I wasn't expecting that and I'm interested to see what the hell is going on. Um, One of my friends messaged me to be like I can't wait for you to read Air of Fire because that's where like shit hits the fan. And I really want to read Air of Fire now. I really really liked this. It was so much better than Throne of Glass. Throne of Glass is awful compared to this um, and i'm not saying that this is like the epitome of good literature but this was just so much more exciting and the stuff that is revealed oh my god but air fire is not on my september tbr so unless i finished all of those books i don't think i'm going to be able to read it next month but i will try and fit it onto my October here we are because I, I need to know what happens next. So Selena is going to Wendlin, which is where the last of the High Fae live, I think. Yeah, it's not on the map on the start of the book, but there is an arrow pointing to where it's supposed to be. So I'm assuming uh, she goes there, she finds out more about what it means to be High Fae, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how much she knows, but I guess we, the reader, will find out more. And yeah. It was just really exciting. It was so much better than Throne of Class. It was just a lot of fun. Dorian is still a wet blanket though. So Selena found out that's not Sam. Sam's the her friend who died. Archer was actually behind it all along. I knew it. I kind of knew it. I didn't mention it in any of these updates because I kept forgetting to, but I did kind of like think, is Archer actually a bad guy? And I'm not surprised. And so finally she can repair her relationship with Kale and they can be together forever. I just I just don't want her to end up with Dorian. 
I hate him. He's just, I don't, I don't hate him. I just kind of feel like he's there and he doesn't really add anything of substance. So I kind of hope that he just gets a bit more interesting because I don't like him very much. Kale and Selena, I ship it. I'm on team. I don't know what their ship name would be. What would their ship name be? I don't know, but I'm on their team. <laughs> I did end up deciding to rate this four stars. I'm in the process of changing my rating system. I used to do half stars and now I'm going to just be doing whole stars and from January I'm going to be using the core pile method so I'm still sort of figuring out how to rate stuff. So this is probably more like a four, four and a half maybe but I, I really liked it. The ending really brought it home for me. It did start quite slow but after like the first hundred or so pages it got really really good and it was really exciting and i i really liked it i think i'm hopping onto the throne of glass train i i understand why everyone says now that the first book is not a good example i guess of this series because it was really boring and not the best written but it was her first book so I'll, I'll let it slide. This was really good. This was really good. I've been sleeping on this series I think as well like I, I really wish that I had read this series as it was being released. I first heard about this series just as Queen of Shadows was released and I really wish that I had taken the plunge back then because I think I would have loved this series a lot more as a teenager but it's it's still good now like I, I i am a fan of sarah j mass and I, I do prefer her adult books i mean i say that i've only read the akatar series but i i am really enjoying this can't wait to read air of fire we will see my thoughts with that because again i'm going to be documenting vlogging all of my thoughts and reactions to the whole series so you will see the air of fire installment of this video hopefully sometime in October. <laughs> but yeah, since I have finished the book, that means it's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've read Crown of Midnight, which I hope you have because otherwise you have been completely spoiled, uh, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. I will see you all with a new video very soon because I just pre-filmed three of them. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye!